and ball home. All right, good morning everyone. As Ms. Frazee said, we're Red Cedar Chamber Music and we're the two core members. My name's Mira and I play the violin. And I'm Carrie, I play the cello. And I'm thinking you may remember us from last year when we came into your classroom. It was me and Carrie and two other members making a string quartet. And we talked about the physics of sound. Carrie showed how he could divide his string and make all sorts of harmonics. And we had composer Michael Kimber with us. And we played some of his music and showed you artwork. Who remembers that? You can raise your hand. Wonderful. I'm glad some of you did. And if you don't, that's fine. We're here today. We love to bring you music that has just been composed. And our friend Michael, who was in the classroom with you last year, he wrote us a, a piece just this fall with the idea that we would be able to bring it to you um, this, this spring. So, we're going to start with this dance that Michael Kimber composed. It's called a Tarantella. And a Tarantella, we'll tell you more about it next week, but it's a very fast spinning dance. And you will notice that it starts at a moderate tempo, but then it keeps getting faster and faster until it's really exciting end. And we love it to be able to see you guys applaud when we finish if we do a good job. <laughs> second and third grade that we play our string our instruments in two different ways one we use the bow to vibrate the string and make a singing sound and the bow the Italian word for it is arco so this piece the first piece we're going to play for you um, is a, a piece we play using only our bows now when we, as a duo, as a group of two, play chamber music, what we're doing is we're each playing our individual part. And actually, um, most music has two components. One is the melody, the part that you would sing, and the other part is the accompaniment, which gives you the rhythm, the harmony, the notes that sound, make it sound better, sort of the texture. 
So last year, when we were in your classroom, we were with a string quartet. That's four voices, quartet. Um, and and we, we were able to do all sorts of things. But when it's just two of us, often we have to take turns going back and forth between melody and accompaniment. So this piece is a really great example of actually one person only getting the melody. Mira is going to be playing the melody and I'll be playing the accompaniment the entire time. Now, to help us with this and to help you listen, we'd like you to go ahead and get your scarves out from your backpack, from your backpack and set them on your lap. And set them on your laps. Beautiful. All right, so this piece is called Cradle Song. It's a lullaby. And, you know, a lullaby is something your mom would sing you to help you fall asleep at night. So the first thing I want you to do is, is I'm going to play the accompaniment. And this, to me, it just sounds like, it feels like um, a cradle rocking or a rocking chair. <laughs> you do with your scarves? You're welcome to use your scarves. Why don't you try it? Make your scarves rock like the cradle. That's so that's much. one thing to be listening to. The next thing is going to be the melody, and this melody is a long line that just kind of sings. So Mira's going to play that for you, and you can try to do something different with your scarves. So now, as we play this for you, you can either use your scarf to make the cradle rocking or to do something different that you think fits the melody. So here's cradle song. Great job! Great job! That's really beautiful, and the colors, the colors, 
Thank you, that was wonderful. Seeing all those scarves was really nice for us. We could kind of peek out of the corner of our eye. So now, another way that we use, that we can make our instrument sound is by plucking the string. And so the bow, remember, the Italian word was arco. This, plucking the string, there's an Italian word for that, which you may remember. It's pizzicato. So can you all say pizzicato? One, two, three. Pizzicato. And the next piece that we are going to play for you is almost entirely played by plucking the string. So we have lots of notes of where we pluck the string, um, but <coughs> there are some other things that happen. Yeah, I did this thing where I used the wooden part of my bow instead of the white part, which who remembers that that's horsehair on the bow? Yeah, this white part, so they give a horse's tail a haircut. But anyway, for this particular thing called coleño, I use the wooden part of the bow and I hit the string. So it's kind of like playing percussion on my violin. And then sometimes I, I'm just plucking one note, but then sometimes I strum like you would play a guitar. So you'll hear that. And then what else? A few notes we play with our bows. Oh yeah. When I pluck the string normally, I just pull it to the side a little bit and release it. But if I pick it up and, and put a, pull it straight away from the fingerboard, I can make a snap pitch, and that's a percussion. That's the string hitting the fingerboard. Another thing I get to do is, is knock on my instrument and make my instrument a little bit like a drum with my knuckles. So this is called Picky Picky Picky. Should we do the demo? Oh yeah. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to tell you about this piece, because it's really a neat piece and it's unusual. Um, when we have our parts separately, uh, there are a lot of spaces in our notes like this. together, it forms this fabric that sounds like continuous notes, like this. Which I think is cool. So feel free, we're not going to be using our scarves doing this, feel free to close your eyes if you want to listen. Sometimes pizzicato can sound like raindrops falling. And as we mentioned, there will be some other interesting percussion sounds in and this piece. Too. We're always working together. No one has got the melody or the accompaniment. We're just working together to make an entire fabric of music.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So at this point, I think we'd like you to go ahead and get your uh, sticks out of your backpacks. And put them on your shoulders. Great. So now the next piece we're going to play for you is a dance. It's a fancy dance called a gavotte. And like a lot of music, it's in four. So it goes about one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And, and now, the funny thing is, is that the, the beat is really strong on one and three. So if Mira plays it, and you take your sticks and, and, and go lightly with me on one and three, right, you'll get the idea of where the beat is. So it's one, two, three, four. You can go ahead and use your sticks. That's excellent. So now, we're gonna play this dance for you, which is a gavotte, and we'd like you to, to, to try and stick with us the entire way through. Got it? All right, here we go. A one, two, three, four. One and three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Jazz has more of a backbeat feel, so we're actually going to tap on two and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we can practice a little bit can here. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Um, Carrie's going to give us some bass line, which is the accompaniment part. He'll play the accompaniment the whole time, and it's all pizzicato or plucked once again. But we'll practice tapping on two and four. A one, two, three, four, one, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Excellent. Great. So now we're gonna play this and I'll be playing the melody and you're welcome to tap along if you'd like on two and four or you can just Sit and listen if you'd rather do that. And I'll help you get started. Great. Okay. So it comes up. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
that I started playing was piano when I was about five years old and then I started violin lessons when I was seven years old and I haven't played piano for many years but I do love playing the violin so now I'm 49 years old so I've been playing the violin for 42 years. Now I started later I didn't start playing the cello until I was about 13 so I've been playing the cello for 40 years only. Now I have to tell you that I have been coming to your classroom for almost 20 years, <laughs> every year. And this is the first year that I can remember that, that I have not been actually in your classroom because of the pandemic. But we're so happy to be able to come to you and, and bring you this music. instruments you've ever played? Is there any other instrument we've ever played? She asked. So as I mentioned, I did play piano when I was younger. I play violin. I also, for fun, do hand drumming. And I don't do that so much with classical music. I do that more with folk and jazz music. And it's just a hobby. I haven't taken lessons on it, but I do enjoy that. So I have, I, I was really not very good at the piano. So I don't play the piano at all. But I have experimented with a lot of other instruments, like drumming, um, like funny instruments, even kazoo, and, <laughs> and um, I mean, I've performed, I've had to play timpani, um, I've done all sorts of other, other instruments. It's just fun to be able to try different things, um, and, and even if you don't get to be really great at them, it's still fun to try and to be able to do something with other instruments. What do you do on an everyday basis? All right, so the question is, what do we do on an everyday basis? That's a really good question. 